let's start the show off with a cheers. <laughs> cheers to key motherfucking we. <laughs> cheers to you, Mr. Day Day. I appreciate that. <laughs> What to do, everybody, and thanks for tuning in to the Day by Day podcast for your Day by Day broadcast. I am your host, Day Day, and today we got a sweet one for y'all. Why? Because we are joined by one of the sweetest fruits to roam the earth. We are joined <laughs> by Kiwi. What to do, lovely? Hello. How are you today? I'm good. How are you? I'm doing great. Thanks for making this happen. Of course. We are here and we're ready to get it cracking. <laughs> so for those who don't know, for the day-by-day -day listeners that aren't caught up to speed, Kiwi, you are a woman who wears many hats. Absolutely. To say the least, right? So let's go ahead and catch them up to everything. Okay. Go ahead and lay out, you know, all it is that you're involved with and you're passionate about. Okay. Um, so I guess I'll start with my passion. My passion is to help women heal themselves um, through sensuality and self-love um, and, you know, just all types of wellness. Like, I like to help people heal, you know, um, and it's because I had to do a lot of that for myself and it really got me to a good place. Um, so one thing that people do know about me that I talk about, I have a personality disorder. It's called borderline personality disorder. Um, I just found out about it maybe four years ago. Um, so what is that uh, personality disorder exact? Uh, uh, what is it exactly? So it's like, it's, a, it's exactly how it sounds. Borderline personality. Um, you kind of teetering on a, on a border. You so you can, go, you can go from one to the other very quick. Exactly. I'm very, okay. very quick. Gotcha. Um, and before I didn't have any control over it. So I was just... Mm you know, things would trigger me and to other people, it would come off like what's wrong with her, but I felt valid in what I was doing. Um, so going to therapy, like I always knew something was going on with me because I had a, a very quick temper, mm -hmm. you know, so I didn't, you know, I was like, maybe I'm bipolar, you know, but mm -hmm. I didn't really take it that serious. Yeah. Um, and then like uh, my baby father, like he would say stuff to me like, what are you talking about? That must be in your head, you know? Like, and I used to be like, nigga, you trying to call me crazy? You yeah. know, like, what the fuck are you talking about? Mm -hmm. But really, it was something going on with me, and I didn't know. So um, when I got diagnosed, it was really hard to hear that. Like, it almost felt like she told me I was schizophrenic because I mm -hmm. felt like I was imagining things. That's what I thought of when you first said it, because schizophrenia is similar to kind of going between one to the other one within the snap of the yes, fingers. So that's exactly. the first thing I thought of. Exactly. So what do you go through to even get diagnosed with something like that? And I ask because I feel like if majority of people uh, were to go into therapy mm -hmm. and get the, you know, the, the test regimen or whatever it is that you go through, yeah. something will come out because Absolutely. our brain is too much for us to handle as it Absolutely. is, I believe. Absolutely. You know what I'm saying? And a lot of us um, have been through trauma. That's the truth. So, I mean, I feel like growing up in America is traumatic. Growing up, <laughs> growing up black in America. Absolutely. Is, it's fucking traumatic. Is generational trauma. If you didn't yes. catch episode, I think it's 37. I'm sorry. Uh, Dark Sugar Podcast. Shout out to her. Um, I think it was episode 37. But generational trauma. Yes. <clears throat> Every black person is a product of generational trauma, whether they realize it or not. And it all starts with the Willie Lynch letters. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Willie Lynch letter, I should say. Uh, if you don't know what that is, do your Googles. That's a whole nother spiel, but I'm sorry. Go yeah, ahead. Yeah, that's a whole nother. Mm -hmm. yeah. But, yeah. Um, but yeah, it was, it was like, you know, um, it was very hard for me to hear that at first. What made you want to go to the therapy in the first place? Well, to be honest. <laughs> Please do. Um, I was having suicidal thoughts while I was pregnant and mm -hmm. that scared me. I didn't want to hurt my baby, which mm -hmm. is crazy to say, cause I wasn't even thinking about myself. Mm -hmm. I was like, I don't want to hurt my baby. But I'm sure you're not the only one in that boat. Of so. course. And that's why I'm being open about yeah. it because that was the truth. That's mm -hmm. I, I was like, I need to go to therapy before I do something to yeah. myself. And I went and then maybe three months into me seeing her, cause I used to go twice a week. Like mm. I was really in there. I was going twice a week. That is heavy. I go it was heavy. twice a month. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. I was going twice a week yeah. for a year, uh -huh. for a whole year. And um, 
after about three months, she was like, um, cause it was just too much. I think I needed to go that much. You know what I'm mm -hmm. saying? I, I just, but anyway, um, you know, she was like, are you ready to hear your diagnosis? And I'm like, yeah, I'm ready. But when she said it, I never even heard of what that was. Mm -hmm. And then she started telling me the symptoms and you know how you watch a movie and somebody tells somebody something that they can't believe. And it kind of goes into like the person's voice gets muffled. That's literally how I felt when she was talking to me. Mm. Like I couldn't even hear her anymore. Cause I'm yeah. over here thinking like, what the fuck? Right. <laughs> it's like you heard it, but not really. Yes. Yes. And I, and I remember driving home and crying and just thinking like, Oh my God, I'm probably crazy. Like I just felt crazy, you yeah. know? Um, and so leave it. I feel so much better. I really do. Like, man, it was a struggle. Um, and with that struggle, um, because some of it was like, I'm sorry, some of You're it good. was That's like, that Bel-Air. <laughs> yeah, <right? laughs> some of it was like sexual abuse, you know, mm. as like when I was younger. So that's kind of where the sensual, sensual part came from, mm. the healing in mm -hmm. that part, because... I took back, I gained back my own power by embracing mm. my own sexiness yeah. and embracing what was sexy to me Yeah. instead of, um, you know, like when sexual assault happens to women, um, a part of our power is taken away. We mm. don't feel control over our bodies, which is why, um, I want to bring this up because Please do. <laughs> you never know who's listening to this, but a lot of guys be like, well, if a girl was assaulted, why would she go out here and be sleeping with a lot of men? And because she don't know her boundaries, because nobody, because her boundaries was taken away from her as a kid. You know what I'm saying? So is that what goes into it? And I ask because, so um, I know, unfortunately, I know multiple women who have been sexually assaulted in some way, and it's like a a, a fork in the road of between the yep. two. It's Where either, they either go all the way away from it or they all in it. It's either they are Black Snake Moan. Have you ever seen the movie Black yes. Snake Moan? So Black Snake yes. Moan, for those who haven't seen it, she was a, she was sexually assaulted and that turned to her being a straight nympho. And that is real fucking life. Yes. Because most of the girls I know that have been sexually assaulted, it's either they turned out to be straight nymphos or yep. they turned out to be completely conservative. Completely conservative. To where they don't even get they turned even, on by yep, anything sexual. Exactly. Exactly. Right? So you're saying that's where it comes from, right? Yes. On your part, at least. Yes, yes, yes. Gotcha. And um, so when you don't know your boundaries, you don't know how to tell a man no. So when you feel mm. threatened, you just say yes to sex. Oh, but shit. men not looking at it like that. That's why I'm bringing this shit up. Of course not. Men not looking at it like that. They looking at it like, oh, she, 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 she just do this. Yeah. Nah, she, she felt like she couldn't say no, whether you made her feel scared or not. It put her in a place of, I don't know my boundaries because my boundaries was taken away from me mm, years ago. Damn. That shit got taken away from me years ago. Somebody did. And then, and then what makes it worse is when it happens to you, you don't get no protection. Nobody's there. In what way? Like, um, like, uh, somebody. That oh, makes somebody safe. Okay. You oh, know, so you don't have really anyone to turn to. That's wild. Cause I, one girl I know that went through it, it was with a family member. Yep. And when she tried to bring it up, all her family turned against exactly. her. And exactly. Exactly. That was like, girl, stop lying. Yep. So she felt so you don't feel safe. And then it's oh, like, damn, shit. either you turn into, well, fuck that. I don't trust nobody. So nobody gets me mm -hmm. or well, fuck it. I must be a piece of shit. Anybody can do anything to me. Mm -hmm. So you just have sex with whoever you don't know who you should have sex with, who you shouldn't. The minute a man makes you feel good, you think all types of shit like yeah. now this man cares about you mm -hmm. when no, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like, it's just so many avenues where it's fucked up and i'm not trying to just um blame men because one thing i did learn mm -hmm. from learning how to um the reason why i'm saying be more feminine is because i want women to understand when you get into your feminine energy the main thing that put me in my feminine energy is learning my boundaries when i learned how to say no when i learned how to um know like what is not for me and what is that really put me because i made myself feel safe and so, being in your feminine energy is where you feel safe and you feel secure 
you know what I'm saying, as yeah. a woman. So how did you get there? What were some exercises that you took or, you know, just how did you get to that level? So, like I said, it started with me going to therapy and learning that I had BPD. I'm not saying this would be the process for many women. But I'm um, sorry, I don't mean to cut you off, but I would like to, you know, push that everybody should get in therapy. Yeah, yeah. Um, I was talking with someone who wasn't even black. Yeah. It, was, it was a white girl who... I'm not going to put a business out there, but she was just going through some circumstances. I just asked, okay, are you going to therapy about it? She's like, therapy? No, what the fuck? Mm -hmm. We need to erase that enigma that therapy is for people who are crazy or going, yeah. only going through some fucked up situations. Because like I said, especially for black people, every black person is a product of generational trauma. Absolutely. So they, they need to go to therapy as it is. But even if you're going through anything that just had you feel some type of fucked up way. Yes. You need to go to therapy about Because that it. shit really will affect you, especially if you don't know how to cope with your emotions exactly. and therapy taught me how to cope with my emotions yeah. more than anything and when I learned that that's what put me in my feminine energy mm. because I finally felt safe with myself mm -hmm. I've and and when I say feminine energy what feminine energy is is letting go masculine energy is um so think about it a man has a dick mm -hmm. a woman has a vagina yeah a dick inserts so into <laughs> you know the dick inserts into the vagina a man is giving and a woman is receiving that's the way i see it mm. so feminine energy is receiving and letting go and being open you know what i'm saying open uh, masculine energy is giving and uh security and protection and like you know those little aspects of it okay so let's 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 try to break something down like in a rubik's cube right now yeah uh -huh. You said that a woman's feminine energy is given. So no, I no, think receiving. Receiving, I'm sorry. And I think the ultimate form of receiving is the vagina. Absolutely. Because that is the most Absolutely. sacred thing, right? And just like um a man giving y'all ultimate is giving your seed. You mm. know what I'm saying? Ejaculating. Like that is giving into and like, we have to receive the egg. I like. What I mean, you, you don't. You yeah. get what I'm saying? Like, receive the sperm. Like, yeah. That's how that works. That is the ultimate form of giving and receiving. Yes. Which and leads feminine to feminine and masculine energy. And then it 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 kind of like trickles up to you know women having that 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 coat on them, that yes. emotional coat on yes. them to not even, you know what I'm saying? Not even. That's a protection. Yeah. That's a protection. But what we do, and this is why I talk about this shit so much, because a lot of people be like, oh, we all got feminine and um. Uh, masculine energy yes we do but it shows up differently in men and women so in a man how masculine energy shows up in a man is way different so when they be like to toxic masculinity mm -hmm. it's really not toxic masculinity what it is is toxic femininity in a man good lord what's really, what's speak really, on that shit kiwi what's really happening is a man is too much in his feminine energy so he doesn't know how to move like a man mm. so he feels insecure and he takes it out on the woman that's what's happening mm. and with a woman she doesn't feel safe in her feminine energy because she doesn't have a man around to protect her so she starts becoming masculine by arguing or you Be know um being aggressive because she's only receiving feminine energy thank you from the man that's trying to thank you and that's that's that's, I, I, you know what? I'm with you on that. Not all cases, but most cases, you got these niggas out here that's trying to talk about, you know, masculine energy and they alpha males and whatnot. Yeah. And they shouldn't be in that position trying to talk that shit. Because no. you hear the shit that they talk about and it's all the way fucked up. That's, wait, now, what's your sign? I'm a Sag. Oh, really? What are you? I'm a Pisces. Pisces? Yeah. We cool, I guess, right? Ah. Uh... <laughs> I knew a Pisces I was cool with. We, we, <laughs> but we, you know what? My rising um, is Sag. I See, know I don't know what, what what does that shit mean? That rising and falling. Okay, so and when you're born. Solar, uh, <laughs> go ahead. When you're born, I'm not an expert. So don't take mm -hmm. this as me being an expert. But I do know what I'm talking about. Mm -hmm. Um, When you're born, you know, if you believe in this, you're made of the stars. We all have that energy within us. Um, I believe we're connected with the stars. Exactly. Yeah. So when you're born, you... I guess to simplify it and make it, it's almost like a star fail. You're being 
born into the realm. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So at the time you were born, this is where all the stars, the moon, the sun, everything was placed. Mm -hmm. And that's what makes up your zodiac chart based okay. on time and the place you were born. Yeah. Um, so that comes in with the different like Venus was here. Venus might have been in Pisces when you were born mm -hmm. or your rising was in Sagittarius when you was born. Mine was in Sagittarius. I don't know what yours was, but your son, the sun was in Pisces and yours was in Sag, obviously. Mm -hmm. Right. Um, so that's kind of how it works. And your whole birth chart makes up who you are and that is your personality. So it's not just one sign that relates to you, but your big three is like the main things that people see. So the big three is the sun, the rising and falling? No, the sun, the rising and the moon. So I okay. guess the moon could be like the falling. I guess that makes sense. Okay. Yeah. yeah. So yeah. So one thing that um I watched, I'm going to be honest about this. I watched a lot of Kevin Samuels within the past, before he passed. Like oh. I used to binge him. Um, and one thing that he would just kind of just, you know, speak on was that how modern black women more specifically today would exert their masculine energy yes. more than anything. Do Absolutely. you do you think that's the case? Absolutely. I completely mm. agree with that. And I was one of those women. And mm. that's why I speak so much on it, because <laughs> women don't see how they're in their masculine energy. So instead of it looking instead of looking at it like a man and a woman thing, understand what you're doing. This is why when I speak on masculine and feminine energy, I only speak on it. Um, mm, let me back up. When I speak on it in relationships, I always ask a woman, does she want a man that leads? If she says yes, you need to understand you're only going to get a man that leads if you're in your feminine energy. Right. You cannot get a man that leads if you're masculine too. It don't work like that. Mm -hmm. So, um, and, and I talk about that because a lot of women be like, I want a provider. I want a man that leads, blah, blah, blah. But you're in your masculine be energy. heavy in their masculine Heavy energy. in it. Yeah. You can't be like, one thing I saw going around, you'll ask a woman what she wanted a man. She'll start, I want a man that match my drive. I want a man that match my hustle. No, you don't. You want a man that hustles and knows how to, you know, provide. That's mm -hmm. what you're technically saying. Yeah. I want a man that knows how to provide. You should not, but the only reason you want him to match your energy, your hustle, is because you don't feel safe. Mm. When you feel safe, you're not going to want a man to match that hustle. Right. You're actually going to want to relax a little bit. Mm -hmm. You're going to want him to do more than you. Yeah, That's what you're going to want. Yeah, And you're going to want to be able to relax and I'm going to get to the money. But really, in my mind... Um, cause this ain't for every woman. Cause I know there are successful relationships where the man is fem more feminine and the woman's a little more masculine, but I feel like those relationships that are successful in that aspect, um, and actually healthy where the woman's masculine and the man's feminine is where they still know their balance. Like the man knows when to show up in his masculine energy, but he might let her lead a lot more times than like he might, um, so be when, okay with her being more independent. So when would, okay. So I'm just imagining because I've never been put in that situation, but I, when does the masculinity show up in that type of scenario? Like, um, if they having sex, like if he just knocking her shit loose. Nah, nah. It might nah. not even be sex. It could be where she doesn't feel safe. That's when he shows up. Mm. When she does not feel safe, he shows up then. That's the healthiness. So he's chilling until need be. Yes. Okay. He letting her do her thing. Right. And if she want to be the masculine head of household, he letting her do it. He taking care of the kids. I ain't necessarily with that dynamic. But I'm saying it can work. If y'all both know when to show up for each other. And mm -hmm. that's the important part. Right. So you can't say you want a man that leads if you want to be the masculine one. Mm -hmm. If you want to be the masculine one, understand you're going to get a feminine man. Mm -hmm. Understand that. Right. Play your role. Right. That's all I be saying. But then the problem is when they get that feminine one, they complain and call him. And that's what I'm saying. Because you really didn't saying, want that. But it's women man. that actually, that dynamic works. Mm -hmm. And I'm not going to lie. I see it a lot in like white people relationships. Mm -hmm. Um but it can work in, I, I've seen it in black people relationships too, but um, what I see more than that, where it actually works, what I see more than that is where a woman is masculine and the man is so feminine that the family dynamic don't work at all. Now she complaining because what she really want is the nigga to step up and all she was really trying to do is help him until he got on his feet. Mm -hmm. That's where you fuck up. Mm. Because, excuse me. That's that, that's because that, that land. It, <laughs> 
In order for a man to get in his masculine energy, he has to work for it. He has to work for it. That's the only way he can get there. And when you stepping in on his journey, you stopping that growth. So trials and tribulations. Mm -hmm. Okay, Kiwi. I'm just saying. I like it. <laughs> I like what you're talking about. I like what I'm you're saying. saying. So, um, you're an advocate for teaching women uh about uh sensual womanhood, right? Yeah. So just um what are some of the teaching methods that you go about as far as showing women how to reach that level of sensuality? Um, so one of the main ways is through yoga. Um, when I do yoga sessions with women, um, I, I focus on self-touch. And um, with self-touch, I believe that it helps you realize the triggers in your body, like where you feel uncomfortable. Like if you do have sexual trauma, when you touch yourself in your, you know, yoni area or down in your solar plexus or whatever, you touch in these areas mm -hmm. and your root chakra and all that you can feel triggers you know what i'm saying you can mm. feel when you're not comfortable when you're with your body you can feel it it's it helps you tune into what your body is saying so like uh say a woman was dealing with a dude who was uh, a child i should say who was complaining about her stretch marks in some area mm. you're saying like uh pushing towards feeling on that certain yes. area that you may have felt insecure about yes. because of a dude let me just say this by the way as far as stretch marks <laughs> We like the stretch marks. <laughs> One of the realest things I've ever heard in the stand-up was Cat Williams talking mm -hmm. about stretch marks. What are you saying? And Pimp Chronicles. <laughs> insert clip here. I'm going to insert the clip right here. That is one of the realest shits. I mean, come on now. Like, I remember the first time I, I dealt with a chick. It was in high school. I dealt with a chick who had stretch marks on. It was the area from her hips to her ass. Mm -hmm. And I thought that shit was sexy as fuck. Mm -hmm. I'm like, what? You mean to tell me there's niggas out here that don't like this shit? Because men be too... I feel like the we only... are we are visual creatures. I will give are. you with that. I, I will agree, give you that. but I also feel like the men that complain about a woman's body are men that I'm not gonna say they don't either. They don't like women, or um, and just because a man doesn't like women don't mean he's gay. Let's be clear, because there's women out here that don't like men and they not gay. They just don't like men. So if a man doesn't like a woman, what's the other option? Um, he likes to fuck women. That's it. He likes to fuck women. He probably has a con um, emotional connection more with men because men understand him. But he's not necessarily gay. He still has sex with women, mm -hmm. but he doesn't like these are men that don't ever have a relationship with a woman or mm. don't have like female friends. I mean, some guys don't have female friends, but if you don't know how to communicate with women at all or you only see women as a tool, mm -hmm. there's something wrong there. Mm. You got something going on with you. Word. For real. Therapy. Therapy. Seek therapy. Seek therapy. <laughs> I like stretch marks. <laughs> so speaking of stretch marks and whatnot, <clears throat> let me ask you this, because you're all about sensuality and women just mm -hmm. feeling confident within their body and whatnot, gaining the confidence and whatnot. How do you feel today about seeing the majority, I don't know if it's majority, but it's a lot of women today going the fake body route right. more than the natural. And then you and being you being someone who embraces your natural yes, your right, natural right, body, right? Because right? mm -hmm. you're more so on the petite side. Mm -hmm. And with that being said, let me just say this. The video, the most recent video that you posted on your IG with you and your homegirl. <laughs> yeah. It's a little more bouncing than a little. <laughs> So you may be petite, but you got you got a little you got a little more bounce than a little. But with that being funny. but with that being said, just you know, uh, like how do you feel overall with the women now so more go now so now more so going towards the like surgery and BBLs stuff. and the Brazil yeah, which is Brazilian butt lift, mm -hmm. and you know getting their titties done and whatnot. Like, what do you how do you feel about that route? <sighs> Speak on it, Kiwi. <laughs> Don't bullshit them. Do not bullshit Look, I'm not, I'm, I'm here for women doing whatever they want with their bodies, um, okay. obviously. Um, but... Do you feel that's a um, a lack of self-love or a display no, no, no. of insecurity? Um, no, because I know some women... I definitely know some women that are very, very confident they got surgery done. Um, I know somebody personally that has work done, and she's confident as fuck. Like, mm. I've known her from a kid. I know for a fact... She solely does it because she wants to look a certain type of way, but she also makes it look very natural. So I want to say, you know, there are women that just get fat transfers. That's still natural. Mm -hmm. You just 
transferring the fat. You mm-hmm. know, it's still your body, but it's still surgery. You know yeah. what I'm saying? It's not like you worked for it, this and that, you know. Um, so she's so confident. When What was her reason for saying it that she wanted it? So, like, um, to me, it's no different than, you know, if a man wants to do something different with his hair or, like, you know, um, he wants to work out or something like that. I understand some, you know, y'all like, oh, just work out. <laughs> but um, to me, I feel like she just did it because she wanted to. It wasn't because of men. It wasn't because she felt insecure. Um, she just, um, it's different for women. This is one of these things I would personally say a man's just not going to understand. You either with it or you not. I won't. And here's yeah, my que- yeah. and here's my question regarding to BBLs some, or whatnot. Because honestly, some women are literally not insecure or anything. Mm-hmm. They just do it because they want to look a certain way. I get it. I get it. Because I was just talking to someone, and she probably may be tuning into this, who told me she was getting her titties done. Mm-hmm. And I'm thinking... She had two kids and her yes. titties still look fucking amazing. But to her, they don't look the same. You so, know, when I had my daughter, I definitely was like, my, no. Mm-mm. Mm-hmm. <laughs> but I intentionally, this is what I will say um, with me when I didn't like, because I definitely thought about getting my titties done and stuff like that. But I also was against it solely because I'm like, I don't. I don't like any, I don't like vaccinations and I don't like putting foreign objects in my mm. body. Like I said, some people get fat transfers. Yeah. That's different. Um, but I'm not trying to get nothing in me that's and, foreign. And titties is different. That's not fat transfer. That's more so I like don't know. silicone. I have no idea, to me be neither. honest. I don't really know. So here's my question. You're saying that, you know, they're getting it just because of them. I, I, wish, I, I wish I had someone here that had... Um, uh, a good looking BBL done. My my like I said, my god sister got um her body done. She looks natural as fuck, but she was already like a little stallion type of chick. Okay, God sister, here's my question to you. Right? <laughs> here's my question to God sister, and honestly, everyone out here who has a BBL, I ain't throwing no shades because it is some good looking ones. Me personally, I prefer the natural. You know what I'm saying? But um, if there was no men, no men on earth before you got your surgery, would you have still gotten it? That's my question. I feel like if the option was there, women would still do it because really? some women really do it for themselves. Like mm-hmm. if your titties looked a certain way before you had a baby and afterwards, cause when my titties got flat, I wasn't thinking about, I mean, of course I was still like, damn what other people going to think, but mostly it was my titties do not look the same. Mm-hmm. And that shit made me feel weird. Like it just was like, but also I think it has a lot to do with, um, we're living in different times, probably like um, back in the day where that was normal, you know, like where you would just see flat ass titties all the time. Mm-hmm. You wouldn't think too much about it. So I think a society does have something to do with it. But I want to say I know some women it's not because of men. It might just be they see something that they like and want to. They, that's what they want their body to look like. It might be some, but I'm. I, I just. I just. It's definitely some. I think it's. It's some, a lot of women think now majority, that are definitely doing it. Um, I'm not gonna say they might not feel like it's because of men, but what I will say is because of how society, like if men are going after certain yeah. women with, body they want type, that certain, you know, like um, curvy. Th- yeah, because yeah. I wanted to gain weight for that. I'm not gonna lie. I'm not saying um for men, but I definitely was like, damn, I wish I had like a little more ass. I wish I had a little bit more thickness. Just for you, just for you to look in the mirror. You're telling exactly. me it has nothing to do with men. It was for me. I really didn't like that I was so small. Mm -hmm. I really just was like, I wanted to gain some more weight because I wanted to feel sexy for For me. For just yourself. Yes. Okay. For me. But I'm not denying the fact that society might play a little. It's just like um, when you buy clothes. Mm -hmm. What you like is because you've seen it. Mm -hmm. I've seen that shit. I want to wear that. That's my style. Everything men do is because of not everything. Majority of shit men do is because of women. You know what I'm saying? We get haircuts. We get certain clothes. Mm -hmm. We rock certain shoes because of women. But you got to understand women not on that type of time. We really don't. So are y'all? I, I don't know. I think just in general, I think it has to go. It has to work both way. It has to work uh, some, even out between both it's ways. Some, but I need y'all to understand. I'm, I'm gonna take some, a poll. I'm gonna take a poll. Yeah, let's do a poll. I'm gonna take a poll. But I really think um some definitely some of these women doing it because they trying to be like these celebrity women or they think getting their body done gonna attract certain men. Mm-hmm. I know that. Mm-hmm. I know that's what they doing it for. Yeah. Um, and and I know other women are doing it because. 
they see other people like damn like body goals Mm -hmm. you know what i'm saying body goals Mm -hmm. i want my body to look like that um i get that i get that i get if you see like i said like uh ruby rose i'd be like damn she gotta but i feel like i got a little body like ruby rose now Uh but before i didn't feel that way Mm -hmm. like um i got another home girl she you know petite like me Mm -hmm. but she's smaller than me Mm -hmm. and she always be like her ass is flat she always talk about that but she don't like it she wants that to change i'm not Mm -hmm. saying she's gonna go get a a bbl or surgery right but she might try to gain more weight because she doesn't want her ass to look flat Mm -hmm. it's just i can't explain i mean we it's this is why i said it's kind of different for um does it have to do with the fact that y'all understand that men are visual creatures I don't think a man is the thought. I really don't. Not for some of, like, I want to say it's like 40, 60, like 60% of women are doing it for men, you Mm -hmm. know, or because they want to attract certain type of men or they think I get my BB, like like a lot of society follows, you know, follows that. Yeah. I would have to disagree with you. I think it's like 80, 20. I think it's 60, 40. We're going to do a poll. We're going to do a poll. We're definitely going to do a poll. I think it's 60, 40 for sure, because the other percent of women don't even fuck with men. They don't want y'all. So you mean to tell me (laughs) some of So you mean to tell... Okay, so even if it is for women. (laughs) It ain't for women. It's for them. For them. So you mean to tell me someone would spend $10,000 on their ass getting fatter just for them to look at it in the mirror and feel good about it. Yes, and take pictures so other women can admire them and think that they a boss chick. Yes. Mm. Yep. That's not a that's that's not a bad point. Yeah. Hell yeah. Yeah, I'm that bitch. I got the body, mm. I got the bag. Fuck these niggas. I'm a city girl. Period. I would, I would give that to some but not majority. But listen. I said 40. Yeah, okay. <laughs> I think it's 40% for sure. I say 20 to 30, but listen. <laughs> um just to get on, you know, we 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 chopped it up about that on a <laughs> on a um a great amount of, you know, time on that. But since you mentioned city girl, uh, one of the other things you're involved with, you're a, uh, <laughs> I'm not going to be politi- politically correct, is stripper. What's the politically correct form stripper about Stripper is fine. Cool. So um, you don't trip about- I say dancer. Okay. I call myself a dancer, but yes, I work at the club. Let's go down that avenue. How'd you get into it? <laughs> so um, I, I ain't going to lie. I always want to be a dancer. Like I used to go to the club. As soon as I turned 18, I'd be dancing on stage. People would mm. take pictures of me. I always wanted to be in a club dancing Mm -hmm. or be a stripper, you know, Um, but I never tried it. And then when I turned about 23, maybe 24, I told my girlfriend at the time, I was like, I want to dance. I'm about to just try it. Mm -hmm. Um, I'm not asking you. I'm telling you this what I'm about to do. Mm -hmm. That's what I told her. Straight like that. And then I started working in the club and I sucked at that shit i did not know what i was doing the first is the worst always oh man the first year was terrible and then i moved back to charlotte and i stopped and then i kind of got on the scene in charlotte so you started in maryland i started out here i was working at onyx and then me and my um girlfriend moved to orlando and Mm -hmm. i started dancing out there i worked at flash dancers Mm -hmm. and then um and then we you know was going through a breakup so we moved back who and you and your my girlfriend at the time okay like yeah. girlfriend girlfriend yeah that's my girlfriend okay so you had a girl okay so you buy oh you were by at least at one point <laughs> we're getting somewhere <laughs> kiwi <laughs> yeah that was my girlfriend okay yeah so we moved back um and then I started working at the studio and um, I kind of was getting kind of popular. So mm-hmm. I didn't want to dance out here. I didn't want people to know me in that. Popular aspect. in what aspect? Like a lot of people was knowing me because I was working with the studio. I was doing a lot of events. I was studio like what? Like rapping, singing? Yeah. Like a recording studio. Okay. Because gotcha. um, I was in school for audio engineering. So at uh, CPCC? No, for Central. sale. Okay. Gotcha. Mm-hmm. Gotcha. Um, and then, so I found a studio to work at and I found one. I started working there and then a lot of people started recognizing me. Um, but I was, I've been a massage therapist for 12 years. I was doing that long before anything else. And so I just came back and started doing massages and then I needed more money. And I was thinking about dancing cause I really wanted to, mm-hmm. but I didn't want people to know me. So I kind of got into the whole online cam modeling type shit. Mm-hmm. Um, and this was before only fans. I had an only fans before only fans before only fans before only you fans. true to this, not new to this, true to this, not new to this. I so, don't know. um, 
but yeah, I started doing that and, you know, get my, and the only reason I did it was mo, uh, mostly because I was already kind of doing like nude photo shoots. So I was just putting those on there. Mm-hmm. Um, on what, the OnlyFans? Yeah. Okay. Um, or or I, the, before sell, OnlyFans. Like, pic, yeah, yeah exactly. But it was OnlyFans. Okay. I was on OnlyFans before it got popular. Since like, when? 2019. Okay. Yeah, it got popular after COVID. Yeah, yeah. So, when COVID hit, that's when, you know, mm-hmm. women was like home, not working. It was yeah. like, shit, I might as well, you know, monetize my body. Exactly. So, exactly. So, mm-hmm. I was already doing that because I was already doing those kind of photo shoots. So, really, I was just like, if a guy was in my inbox, I'd be like, oh, you want some pictures? Blah, blah, blah. Like, it'd be like that. You what know? was the price going for pictures? 20 for two pictures. What? Mm-hmm. That's not bad. That's I wasn't cool... even showing nothing for real. What? <laughs> That's a cool hustle. <laughs> like so, I said, I was already doing like new photo shoots. It'd be like a a couple nipples, you know. It's nipples. So that was a two for twenty. Yeah, like so, you know, they'd just see me topless yeah. or something. So where did you draw the line as far as what niggas would ask for? When I had OnlyFans, mm-hmm. I wouldn't do videos with other people. So there was no partnerships. No. I've thought of that before. I'm not going to lie. Uh-uh, no. I've thought of mm-hmm. No, I ain't splitting my money with nobody, first of all. No. But what if that led to more money? No. All right. So. <laughs> no. Clearly, that's where the line was drawn for one nope. scenario. All right. It's not happening. All right, where um, else? As far as solo videos content. Videos of me getting fucked, not happening. hmm No, it would just be like. What about fucking with yourself? Was a line drawn there? Or was you? It was. It was a couple of clients that got that. Ain't it? Look. Maybe. I do mostly like um that was like VIP. video chats. Okay. I ain't gonna talk too much on that. You know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The game is to be sold, not to be told. Exactly. I ain't mad at it. <laughs> I ain't mad at it. I ain't gonna talk too much on that. But yeah, I was doing OnlyFans before that shit got popular. So I was making extra money doing that Mm -hmm. and doing massages. And then um, I started working at the bank after that. And I did that for almost two years. Mm -hmm. And then it just got real stressful, especially with COVID. Where, at the bank? Yeah, like okay. once COVID started, we was working from home. Mm. Shit was just getting worse. My yeah. daughter had got COVID. They wasn't mm. trying to pay me for being off work. It was just mm. a lot going on. Yeah. So I quit and I was like, I don't give a fuck no more. I need to make sure my me and my baby good. Right. I'm about to just go dance. And then I started dancing. I made like $500 my first time on day shift. At, at Charlotte or Orlando? Um, Charlotte. I was in Charlotte at yeah. this point. Was this Onyx? I was at Candy's. Candy's? Mm-hmm. I've never been to Candy's. The it's only a little stri- ratchet. The only it's a little ratchet. Just a little bit. I like them, but I was gonna say those sometimes be the best ones. Yeah. Uh, the only. I mean, I used to make some pretty good money in there. This white dude came in there one time. I talked to him. Now, mind you, Candy's got cheap ass dances, so I can't work there because their dance is too too cheap for me now. What's the price? Like day shift, their dance is like five dollars. Oh, oh yeah, I'm running it up in there. <laughs> I'm running it up, and I'm a cheap nigga too. I'm running it up. <laughs> Oh, hey, hey, but that's how you get your money. I ain't gonna lie, but yeah. you gotta do too much for that goddamn shit. Yeah, like, that's yeah. too much for yeah. goddamn five dollars. Like, yeah. I never been there. I'll, you know, I make a twenty dollars dancing four songs. The niggas want to mm, touch all over your body and shit. Mm-hmm. Like, it's just too much for me. But I did. Um, it was this white dude that came in there one time. He gave me three hundred dollars, and I was just sitting talking to him for like yeah ten songs or so. So let me ask you, because I'm assuming he gave you the three hundred because he was really feeling you. Mm-hmm. So as a stripper, what is more uh, lucrative, I should say, making a customer fall in lust or love? You don't want them niggas to fall in love with you, but they do. That shit, I, I'm in love with a stripper. Yeah, I believe That it. is real. I, I didn't know it. that was real till I started dancing. Mm-hmm. Did a dude hit you with um, Listen, on, on niggas Players really Club? Be fu- nah, 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 nothing like that. But yeah. nah, I can tell a man really will be in love with you. Like mm-hmm. that shit is not pretend. Yeah. Like um, recently, maybe a couple weeks ago, um, I was in the club with some guy, and I could tell that like, that man is in love with me. Mm. Like he was, I you, could tell. You saw it in his eyes. I could tell. Mm. I said, "Wow, he is really like." Okay, well, let's reassess the situation. <laughs> What did you do? What happened? On, what did you do on so your part? So I think on my part, because I'm talkative, so I, t- I have a lot of conversations with men. That's where I get most of my money. Like, say, you, they like to talk to yeah, me. Yeah, you got to be as a stripper. I've never met a stripper. No, no, that- no. I'm not going to say that. Because it, um, to answer your question about mm-hmm. what 
is more lucrative. Mm-hmm. It's the woman. It's about where you hold value. So okay. if a woman ain't that good at talking, but she know how to perform and she good entertain, mm-hmm. entertainer, she might make way more money on stage or like doing dances versus talking. I mm-hmm. make most of my money talking. Okay. I do not dance that much. Going I don't do poll tricks to mm. be honest but i could i know yeah. how yeah. but i don't i make most of my money talking i could talk to a guy he had me 150 dollars. so you're going to, to on him. a personal level yes mm. i try to connect on the soul yeah. <laughs> so my 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 assumption is that uh strippers that go the route that you go as far as the personal and the talking route y'all could be great actresses maybe so yeah. i mean to me, I don't feel like I'm acting. I, Cause I'm not about to talk. I, hey, I give him the. Hey. Okay, look. so let's let's let's. The white dude I that mean, gave you the white dude that gave you what three hundred? You said mm-hmm. what was the type of shit you was kicking to him? Nothing. I was just talking to him about his life. Regular conversation. Regular conversation. That's all I do. And you know what it and is? And whatever energy that man give me, that's the energy he get back. So if he acting like a bitch ass nigga, I'm gonna treat him like a bitch ass mm. nigga. You know what it is? He don't get that conversation back home from wifey. Thank you. That's all mm. it is. So they feel comforted and loved with me. Some mm. guys, some of these guys be married, you know what I'm saying? And I'm not going to lie. Some of these guys be married and respect their wives and still give me money. Mm. They ain't tried me. They talked about their wives the whole it's time a form, and still gave me money. It's a form of therapy. Yes. The strip club, we don't crack. I mean, this ain't nothing new. <laughs> but we don't crack the code somewhat. The strip club is a form of therapy. Facts. Every- My homeboy just went to the club, right? And he said, damn, like, I, I forgot how much I, I missed that female, um, like, um, nurturing because mm. it wasn't like she was just giving him attention he was right. like she was making me feel like a man that's what i do is he married does he have a girl nope. mm. but but he said but they have been a long time yeah you know because he on his grind he yeah. hustling and shit yeah so but i said that's what the strip club is for mm. that's what i try to remind men of we ain't in here trying to steal your money we here to make you feel good i make just want to get good. paid for my time that's mm. it but i'm here to make you feel good i'm here to make you feel like a man Janae got right. a song called that. Feel like a man. Feel like a man. <laughs> word, word. That's and I fuck with that shit. I like it. You know, okay. I can't lie. We're starting to figure shit out. I, and I and I don't know as much because I've only been to like four strip clubs my whole life. Okay. I'm. I, the strip it, club is not a bad place, y'all. Nah. Stop, stop treating the strip club it like it's like um. Cause men, I swear to God, these be my favorite people. The dudes they come in and be like, I don't go to strip clubs because all they want is this and that. I'm like, listen, when you go to a concert. Do you do you feel like you supposed to go home with the celebrity? Mm-hmm. No. You right. pay for entertainment. Not That's bad. what you paying for. Not a bad synopsis. Me personally, I don't go to strip clubs a lot cuz I'm just a naturally frugal person. And not only that, I know that I'm the opposite of frugal when I get drunk. So the only time <laughs> I go to a strip club is when I'm drunk and the next day I be sick. The only strip club out here in Charlotte I've been to was Onyx, which okay. you've been to before. I only look at- Oh, never mind. Do you want to put I'll it? I'll tell you afterwards. <laughs> I know. You don't, you don't want to put it out there? I be having stalkers. I okay. do not have Okay. Time. Yeah, no, nah, it's cool. We ain't got to put it out there. But mm-hmm. Onyx, the only joint I've been to. You know what I'm saying? And then afterwards, I woke up, saw I spent $200. I don't, I'm the type of nigga, I don't spend no more than 40 partnering in the section in the club. So for me to spend 200 and then here's how I do it in the strip club. You're going to hate me for this. I'm this type nigga, right? <sighs> Kiwi, I fucks with you. <laughs> I throw the money, right? Yeah, yeah, it's popping. I like I would be on your ass. I step I on. I you. step on about first of all seven dollars. <laughs> scoop it towards me. Reach down, pick that shit up. Oh my god, you recycle ain't shit. it. But you know what? But you know what? Y'all do this. Well, not you, but I've seen strippers do the same thing. I was in a club in DC, right? Yeah. And it was a stripper that came through the club. Boom. And she was dancing, right? So she had a follower with a bag of money. Uh-huh. Throwing the money. Right? Mm-hmm. So I guess to invite other people to throw money. A yeah. couple people would, right? So she would go from one booth to the next. So after she left this booth, her follower would scoop up the money and put it in the bag and do the same thing over here. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So recycling happens. But you ain't supposed to be recycling. I know. It's different when it's I know. <laughs> It's dark. <laughs> you it's ain't dark. Shit. So I can get away with but it. But nah, like for real, if you go to the strip club, just tip, like for yeah, real. You yeah. do not have to get a dance. Cause I understand some some guys will come be like, I understand. Some guys really don't like to get dances. They not mm-hmm. comfortable with that shit. And mm-hmm. I get it. Um, but you should still tip like like some guys, they don't even say nothing. They'll just hand you, hey, I know you can't I understand the strip club and they just hand you twenty dollars. Some guys Word. hand you five dollars, whatever. Mm-hmm. Um, but I just feel like you should, if you're going to go in the strip club, do not go in there. Let me tell you. 
I was just at work last week. Mm-hmm. I'm talking to this guy at the bar, yada, yada, yada. So um, we having a good conversation. I went and did a dance and I came back, started talking to him again. I said, so you want to do a shot together? You want to, you know, take a drink? You know, usually when I say that, the guy will buy the drink for yeah, us. Yeah, yeah. We, we, exactly, we get it. Right? We get it. Yeah, yeah. Thank if you. If you were to say that, I would understand that you want me to buy us the drink. Thank you. Uh-huh. So this nigga was like... Um, he was like, um, oh, I don't want to take a shot. I have a beer, though. He was like, and then we could cheers it. He was like, you can get your shot, and I'll get my beer, something like that. Okay, so that was him trying to say that you buy your shot, and but I'll I buy my beer. I didn't take that as that. Well, because so you wouldn't. That was that was broke nigga talk. I've been there you. before. I've so, been there before. and that's what we get in there. I've been there so, before. Um, so, <laughs> this dude was like, you know, he said what he said. And I was like, okay, whatever. But the way the conversation was going, it wasn't as if, because I know how to pick up on certain things. Mm-hmm. It still didn't come off like you pay for your own shot. It yeah. didn't come off like that. Because um, I talk to a lot of men. I, know, I You know what I'm saying? So it didn't come off that way. But anyway, she came with the drinks or whatever. I was like, oh, yeah, um, you know, he going to put it on his tab, blah, blah, blah. And she asked him. Which I didn't give a fuck about. She asked him. And he was like, um, oh, no, I didn't say that. I was like, but I thought. That was yeah. the conversation we just had. Right. He was like, nah, I say you can get your shot yeah. and I get my drink. And I said, <laughs> and he was like, you see how you uh, tried to get money out of me? I said, "Yeah." He- first of all, it's $9. And second of all, you're not giving me money. You're buying me a drink. That right. was the difference. And yeah. I said, but it's cool. I ain't thinking about, like, he kept trying to talk. Yeah. I said, it's okay. I'm not worried about it. I can pay for my own drink. Mm-hmm. And the guy next to me paid for my drink. So. Mm. The real nigga stepped up. Thank you. The real nigga stepped Unfortunately, up. Unfortunately, it was a white man. I'm not over nine dollars. I'm not. I ain't got nothing against hey, listen, you know white man, but I'm just saying it ain't tricking if you that got it. That was a black man that did that to me. I ain't mm-hmm. appreciate that. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I did not appreciate that because yeah. nigga, he said this the part that tripped me out. This motherfucker said, um. He said, I could see if we was talking or something. I could see if I was fucking with you. Nigga, were you in the strip club? Mm, what are you talking about? Over a nine dollar drink. A nine dollar drink. Ideal meal. <laughs> what? <laughs> so I am assuming he was a Charlotte nigga. So do these do these Charlotte Nah, um, this was actually in Gastonia. I'll be I'll be working in Gastonia. Gastonia. Mind you, this nigga missing like three, four teeth. Oh talking to me, talking about some damn. I could see if we was fucking with each My other. My tooth is <laughs> hit the Jerome Rome on him. I right, so these these Charlotte and surrounding nigga, surrounding area niggas in general, uh-huh. do they be throwing a bag? Nah, they be nah. cheap. I what? mean, I ain't gonna say all of them. I don't know. I ain't gonna. I haven't met a Charlotte nigga with the bag that be throwing it. What's the most you made in the day? Um, I haven't made that much to be honest. Like some girls, we made like fifteen hundred. I at the most, I made like a band. Mm. So do you get all that, or do you got to split some up with Dollar Bill? I mean, no, no, no. That's like Bell. the most I made. Club. Okay. Oh, that you took home. Mm-hmm. Shit, in the days that still got down, mm-hmm. got down. Or like I do like a private party, and I I usually take them out home about like five, six hundred dollars, sometimes eight. Mm-hmm. You know, um, just depends. But ugh, I don't like talking about that. Though. All right, we ain't gotta go. We ain't gotta go down that route. <laughs> but nah, like I wanna, I do wanna make a point. Like a lot of people think like strippers go to the club and be making a band every day. That is not what happens. Mm. A lot of times we make it at most two fifty to three fifty. Mm. For real, and I still feel like that's good. To me, yeah. that's a good day. I, my goal would be three hundred dollars. And a I'd day. Be cool. Shit. Three hundred dollars a day. I feel like that's cool. I'll, Shit. I'll go to a male strip club and you know what I'm saying, swing my dick around for three hundred dollars a day. Oh, that's all I'm saying. People be, you can aim up here. You know, you can get if you want to make a band in a day. That's cool. But I'm saying if you try and get that solely off the strip club, that's not what's happening. Mm. Cause it's a recession. You gotta remember. Shit is high right now. We going through COVID. So like. So what was that like? Um. So when did you? Did, were you stripping before COVID? Um, so when I was dancing in 2015, it was way different than now. Okay. You could definitely probably make a band back then. So what's the difference between let's go post COVID, even though it's still around technically, let's go post COVID during COVID and pre COVID. So I didn't really, um, well, this is pre COVID, I guess, but I just started really dancing last year in April. So Mm -hmm. it's only been like a year and some change. Mm -hmm. Um, but when I was dancing in 2015, you could tell like the club was still kind of popping. Like mm-hmm. the strip club was popular, but after COVID and everybody went to OnlyFans and digital shit, mm. that kind of fucked up shit. Cause now mm. everybody kind of, 
it's almost like everybody look at all women like hoes. Yeah. Every woman is trying to be a city girl. So they don't find no value in going to the strip club anymore. So you're saying everyone looks as a woman as some type of hoe or city girl. Um, what you think about that? Well, I would say now more so than ever, it's at an all-time high of women monetizing their body. Yeah. Whether OnlyFans, stripping or straight, selling a coochie for real. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? I mean, what what do you think on, on that? I mean, it's definitely a lot more. I This is what I will say. It's a lot more women trying to be sex workers that aren't sex workers. Mm. Y'all bitches need to stop. Mm. Y'all girls that out here just. Um, they fucking up to, the brand. De- definitely but also y'all don't know what y'all doing and y'all get y'all situation in situations where you get hurt you don't know what you're doing mm. you're not a sex worker mm. so you can't and then y'all making the data seem bad i'm not saying i'm not putting it just on women let me be clear but the women that's out here making it um like yeah i listen to city girls i'll be i'll be joking about being a city girl hot girl blah 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 but i know what kind of men to act like that toward and what men to not act like that towards and y'all be treating every man like oh you got bobby y'all be really having unrealistic expectations seriously and i don't want to say that because everybody reality is different but bitch if you're not living that reality don't be out here (laughs) you can't be requesting certain things that you ain't even doing for yourself Mm. like you can't be out here trying to be i mean you can go on trips like if a guy want to buy you trips but um you can't be a woman that don't even know how to attract three hundred dollars from a man and be talking about a nigga gotta pay for you to go on a trip. Mm. You can't be doing that. You don't know what you're doing. You don't know what you're doing. You don't even know how to make a man genuinely want to give you money. You treat it like every man's a trick. Mm-hmm. There's a lot of women doing that shit. Mm-hmm. Y'all don't know what y'all doing. Every man is not a trick. Some men are actually husbands. Some men are actually good men. It's some men out here that actually want to care for a woman, but y'all out here just like trying to do every man the same. You got to know how to treat certain men. They try to treat every nigga like a McDouble, Thank but some you. niggas is out here filet mignons. That's what I'm saying. And, that- and you don't want to, um, even um, dancers, if you in the strip club and it's a guy that don't want to spend on you, don't um, call him broke. He might have money the next time you see him. Mm. You don't know what's going on. You want to treat every person with some type of level of respect. Fake it. I don't care. If you think the nigga broke, I don't give a... Now, granted, some some of these niggas definitely broke. If a nigga being disrespectful to me or, like, being rude, I'm going to treat defensive. you like a... Yeah, defensive or acting like I'm trying to steal from you. I'm going to definitely treat you like a broke-ass nigga because mm-hmm. why are you thinking I'm trying to steal from you? I'm, yeah. not, I'm at work. Like, I'm not... I'm not stealing from... I'm literally just having a conversation with you. Right. But some men, if they say no to a dance, that doesn't mean he's a broke nigga. He ain't... Uh, even like women that date men and they feel like a man, let me think of an example. Like, um, let's say a man took you on a date and y'all did have sex and he didn't talk to you anymore. I mean, sometimes we have sex with men and we don't want to talk to them anymore. I've definitely it been ghosted. Not- <laughs> Thank you. So it doesn't Definitely. necessarily mean he's a fuck nigga. You do more damage to yourself being like, oh, these niggas ain't shit, blah, blah, blah. Don't do all that. Just Mm. be like, this is what happened. That's why it's important to understand what you're stepping into. And this is why it goes back to the boundaries and understanding consent and knowing when making sure you're okay with the decision you're making. Full circle. Full circle. Mm -hmm. Because when you lay down with a man, you need to understand, hey, this might not turn out how I want it to. Mm -hmm. Are you going to be okay if you still sleep with him? If you feel like you're not, don't sleep with him. Don't do it. I don't care what you think this man wants you to do. Mm-hmm. I don't care. A man not going to stay with you just because you slept with him. I promise you. Mm. I promise you. He not going to stay. He not even. He might not stay just because you didn't sleep with him. But you should be okay with that either way. Even if it hurts your feelings, you should still be okay. Because I was one of them women. That shit used to hurt the fuck out of me. And I had to learn. What did? Like if I if somebody just didn't talk to me anymore, mm. yeah. I would put too much weight on situations yeah. that didn't need that much weight on right it, you know and and from that i learned like some you can't expect everything from everyone yeah damn sure can't mm-hmm. yeah okay that was a great game you just gave right now <laughs> yeah i appreciate that i'm just saying um so before we get out of here i got a few more questions for you that uh 
My fault. Got a few. So, um, personally, as far as like you said, you used to kind of be in your feelings as far as someone not, you know, reaching back out to you. Uh -huh. To kind of circle back, have you ever caught feelings for someone while dancing? Yes. You did. Uh huh. <laughs> <laughs> what yeah. went down with that? Um, actually, it was a guy from DC. Okay, so you felt that back home vibe a little yeah. bit. Was it out? Was it was out here in Charlotte. Him. Mm -hmm. oh, okay. It was not that long ago, actually, maybe four months ago, and I was liking him, and we was having a good time, mm -hmm. and he gave me his Instagram and stuff, and. One day, um, you know, we was talking uh, just a little bit. It wasn't like we was talking for real, for real or nothing. Mm -hmm. But he did tell me he was going to come out here. Um, he's like, I'll be out there in two weeks. Like, I really thought something was going to happen, mm -hmm. but I ain't heard from him He ain't been back in two. Yo, I'm going to just say this. <laughs> I don't know what's up with niggas, but I was like, damn, my damn. I got a I homie. I was definitely feeling him. Yo, I got a <laughs> homie who, when he watched this, he's going to fucking geek. <laughs> I got a homie, whenever we go on vacation and he bags something in another city, he tells all of them that he's going to be back in two weeks. Why? <laughs> what the fuck is up with that? I think I just gave out too much game right there. Yo, he always... He's why like, he, he say he do that? <laughs> I guess just to keep them keep them on the line. You know what I'm saying? I don't know. But he, he I'm not saying this with DC. I, if you're watching DC, I ain't trying to give away your, your you know what I'm saying, your, your mojo. <laughs> I ain't trying to fuck up your algorithm. But Listen, I'm... fuck you, DC, okay? <laughs> now you know, fuck you, nigga. Are you, I mean, do you still follow him on IG? Yeah, you... we still follow each other. Fuck you. Okay, all right. <laughs> it ain't no beef if you come back to the club, I see you. Right, right. She's talking about some fuck you, but, but let you go ahead and pop out. Let you go ahead and pop still out. Kick it. Like, it's cool. Let you go ahead and pop out, you know what I'm saying? Got the cologne on, you know what I'm saying? You got the waves brushed down. Go ahead and pop out. She'll still be nah, on it. Nah, 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 nah. I ain't saying that because uh -huh. he got some shit going on. I ain't got time for them games i'm too old for that sounds good so have you ever <laughs> <laughs> so have you ever had a dude any type of situation <coughs> main joint boyfriend husband whatever while you was dancing yeah yeah i mean not i've definitely talked to some people um kind of on a serious note not like a boyfriend or mm -hmm. nothing like that but 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 it, right before that right before a boyfriend right before a committed exclusive yes, relationship like seriously talking yeah. they don't care that i i know a guy that i was talking to he used to help me cut my, count my money after work mm. never used to ask me for nothing he would make me food look he <laughs> i'm gonna tell you what he would do look one two three four put it in the pocket no fuck two no. three four five six nah. <laughs> <laughs> hell no <laughs> I do not fuck with no niggas like that. Okay, so the, so whatever dudes that you came across while you was dancing, it never struck any type of uh, it competition? It was only one guy. Mm. Competition. Oh, confrontation. Oh, no. It was only one guy that I really did like. Mm -hmm. And he, um, he didn't even say it to my face. Like, mm. we used to talk about it. I wasn't dancing at the time, but I had mm. an OnlyFans. He didn't even know what was on my OnlyFans. Mm. Um, but... He made a comment on my um, post, like I was posting on Facebook, mm -hmm. and he was like, well, I just feel like girls with OnlyFans will never have a boyfriend. And I was like, mm. nigga, mm. we talk. Right. So not only do y'all talk, but he said that on your, on your public- Yeah, he didn't say it to me. On your public, he left, a, he left a public comment saying that on your joint. But he wasn't like directing it to me. He was making but, it like OnlyFans yeah, 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 girls. Yeah, 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 yeah. But I knew that shit, like I, yeah. I took that personal. Yeah, for sure. And I really, like I had this dude as my um emergency contact in my Ooh, phone. Ooh, on the do not disturb, he can still go through? Yeah. Damn. Like I really felt safe with him. That was the end of the line. Yeah, with it? that was the end of the line. I said, mm. "Wow!" I felt like he was collecting information to use against me. That's how Damn. I felt. Because why would you say that on face? Like I don't know. It was now, just weird. I'll, I'll, me coming from coming from the perspective of a man, if I was talking to a girl who had OnlyFans, I and I, I've had a, a episode about this before. Filthy animals, I think it was called. On me and Daryl Jacquez uh, talked about it. Go ahead and tune in. But we was talking about if we could date someone with OnlyFans, and I said. <laughs> it depends what was shown, like yes. we, like we said before. I agree with that. What is the ultimate um, form of submission for a woman? Opening the legs. Yes. Right. Uh -huh. So if you're doing that on the OnlyFans, no bueno. Mm -hmm. If a nipple is shown on the OnlyFans, I might bug out. But I mean, depending on shit. If you if you make it enough and we and we eating off it, 
You know what I'm saying? You take me out to, you know, one of these Brazilian, That's crazy. Brazilian steakhouses in Uptown on North Tryon. I forgot that what that joint called. That is crazy. Then, then, we, nah. then we good about it. But if you're showing your feet or if you're just taking sexy pictures That's what I'm saying. and you're covering your titties. And that's titties, why I'm like, it's real judgmental because every woman not on there fucking and doing wild shit. Some women right. just showing feet. Some yeah. women just taking really cute pictures. Oh, shit. I wish I had a girl who was doing the only feet, the, the feet joint on OnlyFans. Mm-hmm. What? We that's running what it up. Saying. We That's running it up. Saying. I'm giving I you your. I used to date somebody that actually, when I first started my OnlyFans, he gave me the suggestion, and I thought it was kind of the only reason I didn't think it was weird was because I had already been thinking about it, mm. and he brought it up and was like, "I just really can see you in this field. Like, I just feel like which you're field good. was it? If you don't mind sharing, like cam modeling, like okay. being sensual and Word. shit like that. And yeah. he would take my pictures. He never asked me for no mm. money, nothing. He took my pictures. I would post them. Nothing. I talked to another dude that used to um help me post on my fucking Snapchat and shit. Mm-hmm. I never really had issues. Even my baby father, he ain't had no issue with me. You know, I always right. make sure I date people that's open because I'm real eccentric. Yeah. I yeah. like to, I'm very free. I mm-hmm. like to be myself. I'm, I'm just, I, ain't, mm, I was gonna say a wild card. That is not the right word. Um, but I just am always expanding and trying new things. I need someone that's okay with that. Cause Open not, and secure with yourself. Yes. And I'm not out here doing anything disrespectful and I need you to trust me on that. Because mm-hmm. mm-hmm. I'll be open. Word. You know, so. Word. So that's one of the first things that you got to make sure that the dude is. Yeah, I be, I don't really be wanting. Honestly, I don't want to tell people more than I'm a massage therapist versus me being a dancer. Because as soon as I tell a nigga I'm a massage therapist, us dating is out the window because now they want to massage and mm. all this shit. And to me, why you want me to touch your body when we ain't even went on a date yet? That's how mm. I see it. I'm not about to. I don't. But nah. what if what if it's just from a you know genuine? He wants a massage. No. Maybe not everyone don't is. Don't Desha- ask me. Not everyone is Deshaun Watson. What's who is that? Oh, you ain't hear about Deshaun Watson, who the quarterback. That? What he do? He's going through like. 20 or 30 allegations of a uh, massage therapist who, you know, he like sexually, you Tried know, mm-hmm. misbehaved with. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? I don't care about that. If you want to date me, you should not want me to that. If that's on your mind, I'm going to treat you like a trick, period. If you want a massage. Yes. Now, I will say this. If you ask me on a date mm-hmm. and then I tell you I'm a massage therapist and then you're like, oh, let me get him. A-. No, you should be focused on us dating. But what if it's because I don't know? I look at it as I like to ask for massages too, but only I'm, I'm not saying let me get we're not there. I'm not saying let me get butt naked and you care. and we're you rub my yet. my hamstrings. Would you ask a random girl that you was dating to massage you? No, a random girl I was dating. No, so I will say if you this. dated a girl, would you ask her to give you a massage? Yes, I would. At what point? Um. I don't know, cause every girl. Before I've, y'all even went on your date, you gonna ask nah. her. Thank you. That's my point. But so, I, but even I if, don't care if it's on the date. Yeah, I, I would, but no, I'm not thinking. Why of, would you do that? Because I'm not thinking of it as sexual. Wait a minute. What if it's just so? If you shoulders? went on a date with a woman, what you, if it's just the shoulders? If you went on a date with a woman, mm-hmm. you gonna ask her to give you a shoulder massage? Really? Why not? Why? What would be your reason? Because they're soothing. We deal with a lot of stress. Why would you ask a woman to give you a massage but, on their date? And if that's your profession? Don't ask me because it's my profession. That's my point. That's because you what, would not ask a woman that you was on a date with to give you a massage. If it was a random, no. That's my point. But that's your profession. Treat it. I don't. That makes it worse. Do you not understand that? I don't. Oh my god. If it's your profession, you give massages. And I'm just saying You I'm don't want to date I'm a me person then. That, you want to be treated like a client. Nah, that's yes. a, no, 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 no. That's a bonus. I look at it as a that's bonus. That's disrespectful as fuck. Really? Yes. No taken, but that's how I look at it. That's a bonus. Yeah, and you thinking of it in a selfish way. Yes, you I'm are. I'm not thinking of it in a sexual well, way. I, I said selfish. Mm-hmm. It's selfish. What makes it selfish? Because you only thinking about yourself. You're not thinking about if I ask this woman for a massage that I don't know and we on a date. First of all, if you okay. wait, 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 wait. If you ask me to go on a date with you, I'm already assuming you want to fuck me. Right? Say again, I'm sorry. If you ask me on a date, I'm assuming you already want to fuck me. This has already crossed your mind in some aspect. 
Uh, we wouldn't mind it. Yeah. Thank you. Mm -hmm. So if you ask me for a massage, just because I need you to be a little more conscious. Mm -hmm. I'm not touching you. Now I feel like you trying to treat me a certain type of way just because I'm a massage therapist. I'm going to off gate look at you like a creep because you have no consciousness mm -hmm. to understand that you should not be asking me for a massage if you want to date me. Now, I'll say this, because any girl that I got a massage with, we we either had we've had some type of sexual history. Of course. So. Exactly. So I will say this. You cannot ask a woman on a date if and it's a, a massage. Random, if it's a random girl, I've never done that. But if it's a girl that I've knocked her boots before. That's my point. Exactly. So just because I do massages does not mean you can ask me for a date. And that's why I you don't You mean ask for a massage during a date? Period. Uh, either way, if you want a fucking massage, you cannot date me. Period. It's against the morals of giving a massage. First so when all, do you give the massage? I will give the massage once we really date in. But mm -hmm. for you to, that's the first thing out your mouth before we even, I'm not talking to you. I can, okay, okay. I'm not talking to you, period. I see what you're saying. Because now, like I said. You I already thinking of me in a sexual way. I'm not massaging people that's looking at me sexually. Now, I've I'm definitely not. received massages from women. But if we had some type of sexual history. But I don't think that. Anytime a dude asks you for a massage, it's in a sexual way. I don't care. He fucked up by bringing it up because now really? I know what's on your mind. You should have kept it to yourself. Period. Well, fellas, if you date Kiwi, do not ask for you a massage. You better not ask me for no massage. On the first date. On the second date or the third. You better not even what ask if me if we have sex. Don't ask me. Wait. Okay. Now I Kiwi. don't care. Okay. So Let me do it when I'm ready. You know I'm a massage therapist. You already know I do it. So okay. don't ask me. So you're saying, even if, but I'm saying, you're saying even, I was with you until you said even if y'all have had sex. Don't ask me. I don't know about that one. If we, do if, not if ask we me. were dating. Is there not things you don't want a woman to ask you for? If we were dating. Is there something that you don't want a woman to ask you for? Um... Don't ask me to eat your ass. I'll do it if you're my girl and I feel secure with you. Thank you. But that's different no, from it's massaging not. someone's oh body no, with your hands no, and not. putting your no, tongue it's not. in no, someone's it's not. shitty no, crevices. It's not. No, There's it's a not. difference, no, Kiwi. No, it's not. It's a difference to you. It's not a difference. <laughs> my boundary is my boundary. Period. Don't ask me. So you're saying even if y'all had sex. I don't care. I'm going to do it when I want to. Let me offer. Okay. I do this shit for a living. What the fuck makes you think I want to come home and massage you? It's just like dancing. I don't want to come home and give a fucking lap dance. I'll find something special to do for you. Okay. Well, I've never had a, a actual licensed massage, masseuse. Massage that gave, therapist. Massage therapist who gave me. So what's the difference between me? Masseuse I'm, is usually the sex, the sexual ones. Okay. Well, I've never had a licensed massage therapist that gave me a massage. So I can't speak for as far as if that's what she does all day. She doesn't want to give it to me. But I've definitely asked women who I've had a sexual history with for a massage. And she's been more than happy to give me one. You being a licensed massage therapist, <laughs> I guess it's different. I learn something new every day. Right? <laughs> I'm just saying, don't ask me for no motherfucker. I just need to paint the picture of if you want to date me, I just don't understand why you would ask me to give you a massage and not think. I wouldn't on the first date. I But some guys, as soon as I tell them, if we haven't, before we even get on a date and we haven't, this is why I don't tell people no more. Mm -hmm. Because as soon as I say it on a regular conversation, like, oh, yeah, I do massages. Like, if they ask me about my career. It's like, oh, yeah, I need a massage then. And then That's they try like, to book a massage. Bro, you're, so you want to be my client? Now I have to be like, do you want to date me or do you want to be a client? There's a in-between. Because as soon as you get on my table, I'm not treating you like a nigga that I fuck with, period. Hmm. Point blank. So you then crossed yourself off the list. I see. Well, you listen, I'm a man that can see from... Um, Multiple perspectives. I definitely see where you're coming from. Now, I'm going to put myself in the man's shoes. I don't think it's that deep on his side, right? I think it's the same as if you were to tell a man you can cook. Oh, yeah, we got it. You know what I'm saying? We got it. Yeah, one day. That <laughs> Listen, Kiwi. If I tell a man I could cook and he asked me to cook for him. I didn't say that. Now I'm saying if he was like, okay, yeah, we got to make some shake one day because I can cook myself. Mean? I can cook myself. So if you were to tell me that you can cook, it's like, okay, yeah, we got to, you know, so like if a for man a date night, we got to you know, come together and make something one day. That's how I would look at it. That's different. 
That's way different. I know better than if a girl told me she can cook. Oh yeah, you gotta make you gotta make something for me then. I just want people to understand you should not ask a woman to do. That's like asking a man if he a photographer and you start dating a model and she like, oh, can I get? As soon as y'all talking about dating, then her first thing out her mouth is, oh, can we goddamn do a photo shoot? Mm. Like, do you want to be a client or you want to date? I ain't got time to be working with you. That's mm. not what we doing. Yeah. We not working together. I thought you wanted to date me. Mm-hmm. Mm-mm. And then it makes it so much more intimate because now I'm giving you a massage. Whatever you thinking and feeling, I'm going to feel that shit in me. Like, no, it's too intimate. And and it's not intimate with people you don't know. Mm-hmm. You see what I'm saying? Yeah. yeah. That's, That's a all. good point. Take notes, fellas. Please take notes. That's all I'm say. I don't Please play that notes. shit. As yeah, soon as yeah. a nigga say something about massage, I'll be take like. Take notes. If you dating Kiwi, do not ask for a massage on the no. first date, goddamn. Or the or second, second or the third. <laughs> or if y'all or had after sex. sex. Let, her, <laughs> let her surprise you with it. Let her pop up with the Jamaican castor oil and yeah, you know what I'm saying? all that. <laughs> what's um what's what's more lucrative? Massage therapist, only fans, or dancing? Well, they can all be lucrative, but for me, um, dancing is my main source of income right now. Mm. Um, but I'm trying to turn it into um, massage therapy and yoga. I want to have, I mean, I could make the same amount of money, you mm-hmm. know what I'm saying, if I put in the same amount of work. It's all about the energy. It's all about the energy. So if I was to really get out here and find clients, because I have a spa uptown, so... um. You know, find clients for my spa town if y'all want, if y'all do want to come get a massage. You know, don't be afraid, but it ain't gonna be no sexual shit. Okay. Yeah, don't think you're gonna date don't her. Don't think you're gonna try some shit. <laughs> don't ex- don't expect a date her if you get a massage. Absolutely, don't expect me to do no happy endings because niggas be asking. No, mm. I don't do happy endings. Niggas be asking is- straight up while you in the while you in the midst of massage. No, no, no. They'll ask before they book the appointment. Oh. Mm-hmm. I don't take it as offense. Uh, yeah, because I mean, I mean it's, I'd it's rather some, you be honest. Shit, yeah, don't some, come see me. It's some spots that get down. <laughs> exactly. I know a spot in um back home. I'm not gonna say the specific city that had to oh, close yeah. had to close down because. Yeah, yeah it's been a spot like that out here. Yeah. But yeah, nah. Are they still um, open? I, I, I get is very that, professional. Is, that, is that, spot, that spot still open? I don't know. Okay. I think it might be open again. All right, we'll talk. <laughs> 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 but no, I give I give really good massages, though, to be honest. Like, I'm, I've been doing it for 12 years, so mm. I'm really good. I really care about healing. I specialize in migraine relief, pain relief, stress relief. Those are my main focuses. Yeah. natals um so yeah i i've been doing this shit for a long time so i try to separate the two which i do pretty good with you know i don't have to just because i'm a dancer don't mean i do wild shit with my mm-hmm. massages yeah if you need some healing you know what i'm saying come see me for the massages and the yoga mm-hmm. if you want to have fun then you can come see me at work it's mm-hmm. a difference if yeah. you need a model you know where to find me <laughs> what did I tell y'all at the beginning of the episode? A woman of many. I also hats. create websites, so if that's mm. something y'all need. Well, listen. Before we get out of here, go ahead and let everybody know where they can find you at Kiwi. You guys can find me on Instagram and Facebook at Sensual Kiwi. Um, also, sensual, not central. Sensual. Sensual. S e n s u a l. And my website. That was nice why you said that. Have you ever thought about doing ASMR? I have. Yeah. And in late night talk shows. Yeah. You got a nice voice right there. You should you should consider it. When I used to work at um, Wells Fargo, guys used to try to talk to me. Mm, on the phone? Like, yeah. Just because you sounded good, right? I'm trying to tell you. You got a nice voice. Ah, that's just funny. L- listen, what, use what you got. What they say on Players Club, make the money before it make you. Yes, absolutely. But my website is um, www that's sensualkiwi.com you can see my photo shoots you can go to my youtube check out a couple of my blogs um um yeah book an appointment whatever straight like that and listen we went over we went a little bit over an hour and it still wasn't enough yeah. so i'm gonna definitely have to bring you back to day by day i know all the listeners and viewers gonna want the same thing <laughs> straight up um but listen all the listeners and viewers make sure that y'all uh subscribe you know um comment and like you know share if you was really feeling this we want to keep it coming subscribe so that you can be kept up to date on every new 
episode. This is me. I am him, your boy, your host, Day Day. And we were joined today by Kiwi, a.k.a. Sensual Kiwi, for a banging <laughs> episode but until next time ladies and gentlemen make sure that y'all stay safe stay sane but most importantly stay blessed peace thank you